Welcome to the Small School District Association's Virtual College Fair. Thank you very much for joining us today. Before we get started with our presentations, just a few quick housekeeping items to go over. Our panelists will be giving a fairly brief six minute presentations on their schools, which I'm sure is gonna leave all of our attendees with many questions. Uh, so to ask those questions, please do feel free to utilize that Q&A feature. You can pose your question to a specific presenter or you can ask a general question to any and all of the presenters. Also just a reminder that your camera and microphone are off so the panelists will not be able to see or hear you. And about one week from today, a recording of this session will be available on the same website where you registered for today's session. Without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our first presenter, which will be Chapman University. Hello, everyone. Let me just share my screen and let's get started. All right, so my name is Sterling Freeman. I'm an undergraduate admissions counselor here at Chapman. I work with students from San Diego, Los Angeles, parts of Orange County, the central coast of California and Nevada primarily, but we do have dedicated admissions counselors for all different territories across the globe. Um, I'm also a Chapman alumni, so I graduated in 2019. So it's always really fun and exciting to get to kind of share a little bit more information about my alma mater and a school that I'm really passionate about with you guys. So happy to answer any questions at the end, but let's go ahead and get started. Just a little kind of bit about Chapman. We have about 7,500 undergraduate students and about 2,500 graduate students. So we're right at about 10,000 students in total, putting us right in that medium size range. I always like to tell students that we're kind of like a Goldilocks university where we're not too big, we're not too small, we're kind of just right. To where you're not going to feel like it's so big that you're lost or disconnected, but it's not so small that you feel claustrophobic or like you've done everything. You're always going to see familiar faces on campus and in your classes, but always have the opportunity to really partake in and experience more um, throughout your four years. With that, our average class size is about 24 students and our uh, student to faculty ratio is about 13 to 1. So you're going to get a really one on one kind of personalized approach in all of your classes and everything that you do at the university. We have 52 different majors and 72 different minors within the 11 different colleges and schools that we have at the university. Um, and we have representation from 48 different states, four territories and 79 different countries. So we're a very diverse campus, something we really pride ourselves on and are always working on strengthening even further. And then about 53% of our students study abroad in some way, shape or form throughout their four years. We're located in Southern California. So in the town of Orange, right in the heart of Orange County. You'll see kind of here is a visual depiction of where we are and we've got Angel Stadium and the Duck Stadium about five minutes away. So it's super easy to see a baseball game or a hockey game. We've got Disneyland about 12 minutes away. So it's really easy to go to the park. I know my first year at Chapman, I got an annual pass and was probably a little bit reckless and irresponsible with it. But if I had like an hour and a half break during one of my classes, I would go with a friend to Disneyland and like ride space mountain twice and then run back to class. So kind of fun having that attraction right there. They're also a really big employer of Chapman students as well. We've got the beaches about 20 minutes away. So Newport Beach, Huntington Beach and Laguna Beach all within about a 20 minute drive. We've got the mountain skiing about uh, two hours away. So if you like to ski or snowboard, it's really easy to get up there and do that. And then we have LA about an hour north and San Diego about an hour south. So we're kind of in this perfect little pocket with just everything around us so much to do um, and perfect weather as you can kind of see down there on the left. Um, but what's nice about that is we have over 85,000 different companies in the area well and we have connections with so many of those companies that it causes them to think Chapman first so basically what that means is when they are looking to hire students for internships or different job positions that they have they're coming to Chapman first to seek out those students and to offer those opportunities to them so um, when you come to Chapman you already kind of have a foot in the door with a number of big name companies who have worked with us and kind of want to continue to work with Chapman students because they know the standard of quality that comes along with it um, so this is just a small snapshot of the number of uh, different companies and organizations that do think Chapman first. And that along with our Career and Professional Development Center that we have on campus is there to help you with your cover letter and your resume. Um, they'll do mock interviews with you. They'll help you search and apply for different jobs and internships. And they'll also connect you with our alumni base um, in terms of helping you in that sort of networking as well. Here's a picture of what our campus kind of looks like on a day to day. Um, it's always super lively, super active and vibrant. There's kind of always at least one table in this little piazza area that you see there. Um, but on a normal day, we'll have multiple tents up. We'll have multiple groups, organizations doing different things across campus. Um, and it's just a really fun community. You'll always see people, you know, and you'll end up just kind of hanging out and talking to people um, on campus. We have over 190 different student clubs and organizations, everything from like your snow club, which is going to be for like snowboarding and skiing to professional and honor societies to Greek life and kind of everything in between. There's always something to get involved with. And I'd say all of our students are involved in one, if not multiple things across campus. And I think that's part of what makes our community so vibrant and so fun. 
Um, so we always encourage students to get involved. We think that it's really important that you have a balance between your social life and your academic life. We've expanded a lot over the last uh, 10 years. We've built, I think on average, one new building every year for the last 10 years. And so here's a couple that we've built recently. The first is gonna be the Keck Center and that's our brand new building for sciences and engineering. It's all state of the art, um, conducting high levels of research and hands-on learning in there. Um, and it's all kind of modeled after how Google models their facilities and making sure that everything's really collaborative rather than competitive. And you'll see that theme kind of all throughout campus and everything that you do. We really try to encourage students to collaborate and work together with one another rather than competing with one another. And then on the bottom left, you'll see the K, which is our new residence hall. Um, it's for our sophomores, juniors, and seniors, and it's all apartment style living. But one thing at Chapman is we really try to listen to our students in terms of their wants and their needs. And so when we heard students talking that they needed um, more space for the sciences or higher and better technology for research that they were conducting, that's why we built the Keck Center. And similar, when we heard students here uh, requesting more housing on campus, that's why we built the K. And so at Chapman, our real focus is to provide students with a personalized educational experience. And so we do that a lot through our research and hands-on opportunities. Students are able to start research as early as their freshman year, and we are an R2 research facility. Um, and then we also have hands-on um, opportunities in business with the Bloomberg, uh, Bloomberg terminals. We actually have the most Bloomberg terminals on the West Coast of any university. And so students can get Bloomberg certified while they're as students at Chapman and within our film school and everything else as well. So you'll find that in all your classes, you're not just being lectured at, you're really having the opportunity to learn hands-on and get that hands-on approach um, for a more of an applicable kind of learning style. We also have D3 athletics, study abroad, and a ton of, again, organizations and opportunities on campus. So whether you're into the performing arts, you are into sports, or you like to just have that kind of school spirit, sports experience, we have all of it. Um, in terms of study abroad, we have over 100 different study abroad programs in three different ways. And like I said, about 53% of our students do study abroad in some way, shape, or form. So in terms of deadlines, November 1st is going to be our first deadline that houses our early action and early decision deadline. And it's priority for any of those programs listed right there. And then we also have a regular decision deadline, which is a non-binding deadline for January 15th. But if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. If you scan that QR code, it'll take you to our website. And thank you. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have after this. Thank you very much, Chapman. Um, before we move on to our next presenter, for all the attendees who recently joined us, uh, please do feel free to ask questions to any of the panelists utilizing the Q&A feature. But up next is Fresno Pacific University. Perfect, thank you so much. All right, hello everyone. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Joy Rubio. I am an admission counselor for Fresno Pacific University. So much, much like my uh, colleague here, Sterling, I am also an alum of Fresno Pacific University. I graduated in 2017 with my bachelor's in communication studies and a double minor in business and music. So if you have any questions about what it was like being a student and just that experience, I'm here to help guide you along that path. So, one question that we get is, sorry, why would I choose Fresno? Where is Fresno? Um, we are a smaller private school. And so we are located in the Central Valley. And so it's so aptly named because we are very centrally located. As you can see, we are surrounded by three national parks. We're a few hours away from the coastline, a few hours away from Sacramento, and then just a few hours away from the LA area. So as I mentioned, very centrally located. We are the fifth largest city in California. Fresno Pacific itself does have five regional campuses, but for all of our incoming freshman students, you will be located on the main campus in Fresno. And so that's where all of our, um, all of our hundred majors are housed, as well as um, if you would like to live on campus, that's where you would also be. Um, so Fresno, the area has just grown to be such a beautiful city in the four years that I was there and even until now. Alumni have come back and just really revitalized the city of Fresno with small businesses and just really giving back to the community after graduating from Fresno Pacific. And it really truly has been something incredible to see. At Fresno Pacific, we have an 11 to one student to faculty ratio, meaning for every 11 students, there's gonna be one professor. So again, we do have those small class sizes and we are able to have an average GPA of 3.4. So it just goes to show the meaningful relationships that you're going to get from your professors as well as classmates really do help in your academics. We have over hundred areas of study which composed our 
which are composed of 40 majors, 38 minors, um, and you compare them however which way you would like. Just like me, I majored in double minor because I was interested in so many areas of study and I didn't want to um, just settle for one. So I expanded my horizons and you know, really tested it out. And the faculty were absolutely amazing and they still are with, they don't want you to have to compromise on areas of study. If you wanna be passionate, they want you to get the most out of your college education. 81% of our faculty have the highest degree in their field. So this just goes to show you are going to have, you are going to receive that genuine learning experience from the professors. We do not allow student assistants to teach the class because we want you to get that firsthand knowledge from the professors. We also have an open door policy with our professors as well, meaning that you don't have to email them to schedule an office hour. As long as their office doors are open, you are invited to go in, have a conversation, maybe ask a question that you didn't wanna ask in front of the class. So again, they're very great at just being inviting and really wanting to foster that relationship with you. It's important to them that you are not only preparing yourself for the college rigor, but you're preparing for life after college as well. So whether it be through internships, um, mentoring, anything like that, they are there to walk you um, through that path. At Fresno Pacific, we have five top majors consisting of psychology, kinesiology, business communications, and pre-health. One of the um, great aspects of this is that we do not have impacted majors. So whatever you put on your application, that will be the major that you go into. You are able to change it once you get in if you decide that the, your original major was not where you wanted to be, but because our majors are not impacted, you have that guarantee of getting into that program. We also have three distinctive majors at Fresno Pacific, one being nursing. We're gonna have our first graduating class within this next year. And so if you are interested in becoming a nurse or anything in the medical profession, please let me know. I'd love to go into greater detail with that process. Our next distinctive major is liberal studies. So if you're interested in teaching, our classes are specifically designed to help you pass the CSETs. Nearly almost all of, we have a pretty much 98% passage rate and students that are able to get into a teaching um, career. So that's absolutely outstanding. We also have a software engineering program as well. So if you're interested in working with companies and creating software, that is also one of our distinctive majors. I know there is a bit of a worry about, can I graduate in four years? I hear it takes at least five. At Fresno Pacific, we do have a four-year graduation guarantee. There are some requirements, but if you go to experiencefu.com backslash four-year guarantee, there are um, just some outlines, but essentially you would just meet with your advisor and they would go over what it would look like for you to graduate in four years, the classes you would need to take. And so that is normally just a huge relief for our students knowing that they don't have to pay extra to, a, to have to attend another semester or even another year. At FPU, we do have competitive sports teams. We are a part of the NCAA Division II and a part of the PacWest Conference, meaning that we are um, able to compete in the Western region of the United States as far west as Hawaii. We also have a um, charter bus, so sometimes we get to have a student section travel all over California with our teams. If you are interested in competing um, on one of our sports teams, you just need to go to fpuathletics.com, fill out a recruit form, and the coaches will get in touch with you. Um, this is just a way for students to figure out how they can afford FPU. So we do offer a lot of scholarships. Um, we are giving virtual campus or in-person campus tours if you are interested in that as well. Um, this is my contact information if you are interested in attending FPU. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much, Fresno Pacific. Um, our next presenter will be from Humboldt State University. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Leo and I'm one of the admissions counselors here at Humboldt State University. And we're located way up in the traditional homelands of the Wiyot people, way up Northern California. We're about five hours north of San Francisco, right on the coast. 
about five hours from Sacramento as well. We're about an hour and a half from the Oregon border. This is our beautiful campus. Um, we're right on the coast, so we basically live in a rainforest. So all the green that you see on the photo and all the trees, there's no drip lines or water lines or anything like that. All this is natural. Um, we're right on the coast, as you can see up to the left, that's Humboldt Bay right there. We're about a mile away from the ocean. And here's a little map for, uh, for some of those you guys need a little map. Um, from the Los Angeles area, we're about 12 hours away. 39% of the students who attend Humboldt State University are from the Los Angeles area. We've done a survey as to why and students say they want to go furthest away from their parents without paying out of state tuition. And so it's kind of a kind of a joke, but they once they get up here, they really fall in love with the place. The only thing is it's like I said, it's 12 hours away, but we do have a direct flight from the Arcata Airport down to um, LAX. We are part of the 23 campus California State University system. So if you're applying to any one of the other campuses, you would use the same application and the same admissions requirements for any of the California State Universities. We're not an impacted institution. We do have um, the social work program is the only uh, major that is impacted. So if you meet all the A through Gs, you have above a 3.0. Um, SAT, ACT, um, you're good to go. You can set up a meeting with me, a one-on-one -on -one individual meeting, um, counseling appointment if you'd like, if you visit the admissions website. Um, so basically we are all about hands-on learning, getting the real world experience. So the photos up on top, those students are all in class. So those are oceanography, marine biology, environmental resources, engineering. Because of where we live, we take full advantage of our, there's so much learning and so much education outside the walls of our institution that our students get out there. They, we have a 1.5 million acre forest directly attached to our, our university. So you've got zoology, you've got wildlife, um, you got fisheries biology, you got forestry, all these students, and again, in the classes up on the photos above, those guys are all in class and they get real world experience with the, 13 different tribal communities learning about traditional ecological knowledge, how tribal communities survived at this, in this area for thousands of years before non-native people arrived. Um, working with um, California Fish and Game with Redwood National and State Parks. We're up here where all the redwoods are to where you can drive, big trees where you can drive a car through. That's where we're located. Um, so you guys can definitely take a look at our website to get some more information about the location. This is just one slide about where we are with the information. Our average rainfall is 38 inches, so we get lots and lots of rain. That's why it's so green. Um, our temperature in the summertime is 64 degrees. If it's 70 degrees on campus, I'm taking the day off because it's too hot. And then the wintertime, we don't get snow. We haven't had snow here in about seven years. Um, so we're, we're pretty mellow in terms of our, our ecosystem. Again, it's because we live in a rainforest. 56% um, of the students are first generation students. So they're first in their family to be earning a four-year college degree. We're a real small institution. So we'll only have about 8,000 students in total. So that makes our classrooms really small. You're never going to be in a class where you have 300 students in the classroom. They're all about 30 students per av on average. Um, we have 50 majors. Um, the philosophy of ditch the desk and get out and get the hands-on learning experience is what, is what Humboldt is really all about. And this is our biomechanics lab. A lot of our students are able to do to research with their professors as undergraduates, you don't have to have your bachelor's degree in order to do some of the research with your professors. You can jump right in as a freshman and get that experience. This is just an outdoor recreation class. We do have um, teacher credential program. We started off as a teacher's college way back in 1913. Again, just some, I'm doing some quick slides here real quick so I can show you some of the uh, housing that we have on campus. But again, doing the hands-on learning, we do have a forestry program here where we're looking at um, forest fire management. We do have the only undergraduate oceanography program. So these students are in class. They go five miles out into the ocean, take samples of the bottom of the sea, see life and bring it back and evaluate it. Um, there's free tutoring. The student to faculty ratio is 21 to one. Again, we have really small classes. These are just some photos of our campus so you guys can kind of have an idea of what it's like. We do have the clubs and activities, about 200 clubs and activities. Intramural sports, we do have division two NCAA. Um, sports, but there's also the club sports and activities. A lot of our students like to do volunteer work just because of the way, the place where we live. They like to go out and do beach cleanups and volunteer at, at the at the elementary schools and different things like that. Here quickly to close off are some of our, our housing facilities that we have on campus. We do have one famous alumni who graduated from Humboldt with a marine biology and art degree, and he's the guy who created SpongeBob SquarePants. So that's why SpongeBob's in the back there. Um, Cypress Hall, these are all the different places that you could live on our campus. We have a room for about 2000 students 
um, to live on campus. We also have off-campus housing opportunities. We're about $24,000 a year. We're also participating in the WUI program. So there's some big savings. Fill out your FAFSA. You we're on social media and all that good stuff. We do have campus tours um, happening, our online virtual tours if you go to our main website. And I think that's it because the next slide is a video. So I'm going to go ahead and stop there. Thank you guys very much. And I hope to um, have a conversation with you sometime soon. Thank you. Thank you very much, Humboldt State. Um, as we move into the second half of our presentation, just a reminder to our attendees, please do feel free to send through any questions you have via the Q&A. But up next is John Cabot University. All right, thank you very much. So I'll start my timer here. Um, yeah, so my name is Ramsey. I'm an admissions counselor for the United States for John Cabot University, uh, which is an American university all the way over in Rome, Italy. Um, and I actually graduated from John Cabot uh, close to four years ago. So if you guys have any questions about that, either side of those, uh, just let me know. But let's just jump right into it. So a few things to know right off of the bat. Um, we're a pretty small school. We're just over a thousand students, but we do have students from over 70 different countries. So you're constantly meeting people from different backgrounds and experiences and cultures, very multicultural environment. Um, like I said, small school, so 15 to one student to professor ratio. Um, I can tell you from my experience, you really get to know your professors and you know, you'll definitely repeat some professors over the few years that you're there. So um, by the end, you're just being taught by like a friend, basically. Um, we are an American accredited university, so that means that you can go and get a degree from John Cabot, live in Rome for four years, and then come back to the U.S. with that accredited American degree, just like I did. Um, but yeah, I'll touch upon the campuses and the tuition and all of that. And if you guys are taking notes, I have a QR code at the end that has everything I'm talking about. So, um, yeah. So a few things that kind of set John Cabot aside, I think, other than us being in the heart of Rome, um, which is pretty unique in of itself, but um, it is an American style learning environment. So it's all the same that what you're used to, um, you know, curriculum, GPA, semesters, everything's the same, but you're in Italy. Um, you get taught by these amazing professors from so many different backgrounds. They really reflect the student body in that way and that from all around the world, from, you know, so many different uh, universities and PhDs. Um, a lot of them are specifically in Rome to be teaching at John Cabot, so they're very dedicated to making the experience special. Um, and I think on-site learning and learning by doing can be summed up in experiential learning, um, which is quite literally learning through your experiences, of course. So the professors love to use Rome as a resource, you know, take the students outside of class and go to the museum or the piazza or the statue or whatever it is you're learning about that you can go and see in person. Um, that actually makes a huge difference because when you actually learn through your experiences, you remember that information, not just for a test or an exam, but you just remember it because you lived it. Um, and like I said, it's a very multicultural environment. So if you're trying to get that diversity, if you're kind of travel and, you know, appreciate some culture, this is definitely the place for you. Um, of course, of course, COVID is a thing, but I think we're on the up here. Um, Italy is doing okay right now. They, I, I think by fall, of course, nobody can say anything by, you know, right now, but we'll, we're waiting to see what the laws are. And um, even this past fall and spring, we've been somewhat in person. So we're thinking that fall 2021 will be a lot more in person. Um, but yeah, we're being super lenient with refunds and um, housing deposits and refunds and all of that, but trying to be as safe as possible, of course. So yeah, we, you know, it's a university, so it's not just all going to Rome and eating pizza and pasta, but we have 14 majors and 19 minors, um, few academic support services. I use the writing center a lot. Um, you do a lot of writing in a liberal arts institution, and it's nice to have some people help you out sometimes. Um, I studied communications when I was there, but this is our list of majors. We also have this list as minors and uh, a few more like mathematics and philosophy as my uh, as minors. So yeah, if you guys have questions about specifics, please let me know in the chat. Um, so something big at John Cabot is our career services. Um, we're very big on getting our students professional experiences before they even leave college. So getting an internship is very common at John Cabot. Um, we have partnerships with over 650, I think it's over 700 companies now in and outside of Rome. Um, and we hold three career fairs every year where we invite some of these companies to the school and you, know, you actually get to interact with them, see what they're looking for in an applicant, maybe give them your resume. And as you can see, over 80% of the students who get an interview end up getting the position because they know John Cabot and know the students we send them and all of that. So, yeah, um, 
it's nice to have professional experience and not only professional experience, but an internationally professional experience. But, so because we're not a giant school, we put a lot into student led clubs and organizations and um, we have clubs from you know photography to fashion club to theater society and newspaper clubs. I think there's something for everyone just kind of like Rome. It's what you bring to the table. Um, we do a bunch of trips and activities, you know, we do weekend trips and day trips and, um, you know, a bunch of the activities really reflect the kind of Italian culture, you know, cooking classes, things like that, learning how to cook pizza. Um, we do have athletics, we have, of course, soccer is our biggest thing over there because it's Italy, but we do have basketball and volleyball and a few of the other um, smaller sports and we also have cheerleading. Um, so yeah, if you guys have questions about those, please let me know. I'm just running out of time, so I'm going to cover everything. Um, our tuition is just under 27,000 and that's for the full year and that includes the health insurance and the meal plan. <clears throat> and that's not including any scholarships whatsoever. So we have our own need based and merit based scholarships. Um, and we also take the FAFSA if you're planning on using that. Um, and over 85% of our students receive some sort of scholarship from John Cabot. So it's very likely you receive something from us. Um, yeah. So I'll jump through the campus. Our campus is an urban campus, so a few buildings near each other in the heart of Rome, but when you're outside the buildings, you're just in the streets of Rome, um, which is kind of the best part. Um, but yeah, it's all right on the river, so super nice um, auditorium and cafeteria, and um, we even have our own art studio. Rome is a very artistic and inspirational city, so we have our own apartment um, housing really it's more European in that they're all apartments and you'll have a small kitchen and maybe a small balcony but they're all 24 hour security and we have a full gym um, lots of student lounge areas um, and applying is just like applying to any other international or any other American university I mean um, we're on the common app and just need your transcripts uh, your letter uh, letters of recommendation a personal essay and an interview most likely with me um, but that's my time. If you guys wanted to pull out your phone super quickly and just scan this QR code um, and definitely follow us on the socials to kind of see if you can see yourself in, in this type of environment. But yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions. Thanks. Thank you very much, John Cabot. Uh, moving on to our next presenter, we have St. Mary's College of California. Wow, I don't know about you all, but after seeing those photos, I'm ready to book a flight to Rome. That looks beautiful. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Jessica Stunt, and I am the admissions counselor here today from St. Mary's College, California. We are located in the San Francisco Bay Area in a small town called Moraga. Uh, we have about 2,600 undergraduate students, definitely on the smaller side. We are religiously affiliated with the Catholic Lasallian tradition. Um, Lasallian is a word that is um, kind of one of the branches of Catholicism. Um, and it was created by a, a man named St. Jean Baptiste de La Salle. We are a liberal arts college, um, but certainly have the sciences and core curriculum. I think one of the biggest misconceptions of a liberal arts school is that they only have the arts and that could not be further from the truth as I'm sure many other colleges on this call today would tell you as well. We have 43 different academic majors with a very small average classroom size, as you can see. And one of the most important affiliations is that we are considered one of the colleges that changes lives. This is a book that was written by a man named uh, Lauren Pope. He was a newspaper journalist and he wrote about 45 different small liberal arts colleges. What makes us unique is that we are the only California school on this list. We are the only school with a Catholic affiliation and we are the only school with an NCAA Division I sports team on our campus. Um, talking a little bit about our student life, this is uh, in one of the more central parts of campus in front of De La Salle Hall, which is a residence hall. Um, we definitely guarantee campus or guarantee on campus housing for two years. We have many student run clubs. Um, this number is always growing. And as I mentioned, we have a lot of um, a lot of school spirit. I think one of the most unique things is that despite our small school size, there are so many fun, lively athletic games that you can attend um, that are NC, NCAA D1 sport, sporting games. We have 23 club sports and intramurals, and many of our students tend to be very community service um, driven. So these two offerings, we have a January term and collegiate seminar. These two things make us very unique and are the two things that put us on that list of colleges that change lives. Let's start with collegiate seminar. This is based in the Socratic seminar style. As you can tell from the picture on the right, 
this is a very different format of a classroom, right? Normally you're kind of sitting in rows and there's one person talking, but as you can see, this is a very collaborative setting. You will take four collegiate seminar classes, one per academic year, your freshman, sophomore, junior, senior year, and um, you are discussing the great books. To be honest, when I first heard of the great books, I thought it was Harry Potter, I thought it was Lord of the Rings. These are other great writers and thinkers that do not include these books. These are people like Plato, Aristotle, Galileo, Homer, spanning to more contemporary thinkers as well. Maya Angelou, Virginia Woolf, Martin Luther King Jr. As you can tell, there's a lot of time between these texts and students will take it section by section of history up to the most current time. So you'll take four of them once per academic year. In this classroom setting, you're really learning how to um, kind of formulate your, your train of thought, as well as learning to listen to each other in a thoughtful way. Our next class is January term, and that's seen on the left. Um, we are a semester school that runs on the 414 system, meaning you'll take about four classes in the fall, one class for the entire month of January, and about four classes in the spring. So kind of weird, right? Did you catch that? One class for the entire month? I mean, I'm sure in high school or at your community college, you're taking upwards of four or five classes all at the same time. January term is a time for us to say to our students, hey, take a class completely unrelated to what you're majoring in. Take a class that just sounds like fun. We have uh, offerings on campus. One of my favorites is dog psychology. We have classes domestically and internationally. You'll take one January term each year, so you'll take four total by the time that you graduate. To give you an idea of how we adjusted to um, the world of COVID, we actually had over 400 students that were living on campus. Being located in um, the, the climate of California in the Bay Area, we have very mild climate, uh, meaning that we are able to easily hold, hold our classrooms um, outdoors. And these are some of our outdoor classrooms. Personally, I hope these stick around. I think they look kind of fun and a little bit futuristic. So if I were you, I would just take a screenshot of this picture. There's a lot of information um, that I don't feel like um, reading one by one. I know you all can read this on your own, um, but the most important things are the deadlines there on the left, um, as well as this idea of scholarship. I would say that many of the other colleges on this call today could probably all agree that the sticker price of what you see on each of our websites as tuition and room and board is usually not reflective of what students are actually paying to attend that school. The reason why is because we have many scholarships that are usually based in merit. Um, as you'll see, our merit scholarships uh, vary between $13,000 and $30,000 a year annually. I'd be happy to sit down with you um, at, a, at another time and kind of go through that uh, more specifically to kind of talk through that. That's the end of my time here today. Uh, in the chat box, I'm going to drop my contact information just so you all have that. Um, but thank you so much for, for being with us today. And I'd be happy to. Thank you very much, St. Mary's. Um, as we move into our final presentation, uh, just a reminder to please feel free to send through any questions you have for any of our panelists. We'll have a little bit of extra time at the end, but now is the time to continue sending through those questions. Uh, but up next is Woodbury University. Hi, thank you so much. Um, hi, everyone, and welcome to Woodbury. My name is Ashley Ramsey, not to be confused with Ramsey. There are two Ramseys. Um, and I just wanted to tell you a little bit about Woodbury. Woodbury is a small nonprofit, fully accredited liberal arts college located in Burbank, California, which is about 20 miles north of downtown Los Angeles. And our location is ideal. And please feel free anytime you want to scan this QR code, it'll take you to a link and you can fill out a form for more detailed information. So we are within 10 miles of many major studios, including Warner Brothers, Disney Studios, Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, DreamWorks, Universal, and more. Woodbury is a small school. We have about 1,200 students, and the average class size is about 15 students. So what does that mean for you? What does a small university mean? 
small class sizes, personalized and customized curriculum, and it means a lot of one-on-one -on -one interaction with your professors. Classes are solely taught by professors, and because of the small campus size, your classes won't be impacted. So all of your required courses are available when you need them. At Woodbury, you will experience practice-based learning, which many of our other schools here today also have practice-based learning. It's a very hands-on approach to learning where you will gain necessary skills that you will be able to apply to your career. We offer over 20 undergraduate majors, including animation, fashion design, marketing, filmmaking, architecture, professional writing, public safety administration, and a three plus one program, which allows students to earn their bachelor's and master's degrees in business administration all in four years. Several of our majors are nationally ranked, including animation, graphic design, game art and design, architecture and interior design. And our location really makes, um, is really ideal for those students and they really thrive in those areas. All of our students are required to have an internship before they graduate. And internships are just such a great way to make connections, to learn from professionals in your field, and to gain valuable experience before you graduate. Some of our most recent internships include Nickelodeon, Warner Brothers, Disney Studios, H&M, DreamWorks, NASA, Ernst & Young, LA Times, Blizzard Games, and more. The majority of our students do receive financial aid. Our yearly tuition is just over 41,000, but our financial aid pa package, our average package is around $21,000. And because we are a private institution, the tuition is the same for both in-state and out-of-state applicants. And our merit-based scholarships are available to anyone who applies and meets the GPA requirements. We also offer a 10% match for all federal and state grants that students receive. Additional scholarships, including social justice scholarships and study abroad opportunities are also available. And those can be found on our website. And I will provide that link for you in the chat at the end of the presentation. So our application requirements, uh, Woodbury requires an unweighted GPA of 2.5 for scholarship consideration. If you are accepted with a GPA of 2.25 to 2.49, you will be placed in our bridge program. And with a G GPA of 2.5 to 2.74, you will be placed in our transition track. And these are just additional courses and additional resources for you as a student to make sure that you are on the path to success. We want you to be very successful and we want you to graduate within those four years. We are test optional and personal statements and recommendation letters are recommended, but they are not required. A portfolio is also required for animation students and highly recommended for graphic design students. You can apply through either the Common app or you can apply through Woodbury's website. And our priority deadline is March 1st, but we do have rolling admissions, so we will continue accepting applications through the summer. And this is just a little more information if you are interested. We actually did just open up our campus to in-person tours for accepted or admitted students. I will provide uh, some links and I will provide my information in the chat for you as well, um, as well as a view book for any additional information you would like for um, any majors that you are interested in. So thank you so much and please feel free to ask any questions if you have them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Woodbury. Um, and thank you to all of our panelists uh, for giving us all a small taste of your institutions. Uh, hopefully the attendees uh, have been thinking about some questions they wanna ask. So do feel free attendees to pose them through the Q&A if, if anything has come to mind. While we're waiting to see if any additional questions come in through the Q&A, perhaps we can do a round of questions here ourselves. Uh, six minutes obviously is not a lot of time, and I'm sure there's many things you wanted to put in your presentation that you could not. So my question is, um, what's one thing you did not have time to present on that you'd like to share 
could be an event or tradition, a fun fact about your school, et cetera. So we're going to that same order, starting with Chapman. Yeah, I guess I'll share one of my favorite events that we host as a university. Every winter, they we have something called Winterfest, and it's basically right before finals week in December, and Chapman like lights up the whole place. They decorate everything very holiday themed, and they actually, even though we're in Southern California and it's typically like 70 degrees around that time, they put snow machines on top of the buildings, and they actually make it snow in our piazza, and so they've got different groups performing. They've got hot chocolate and like treats and stuff, and it's just a really fun way to kind of end your semester. Great, thank you. Uh, Fresno Pacific. So one of my favorite events, and I think it's almost everyone's favorite event at Fresno Pacific is our Thanksgiving Day luncheon. The Wednesday before we go on break, um, the whole campus shuts down. Students, staff, faculty, we all gather in our special event center, which is our gym. And everyone's invited to partake in a Thanksgiving Day lunch. And then the way we kick it off is we have all of our international students um, march along the second story of our special event center and they carry their flags as their names are announced. And so it's just really amazing hearing and seeing their teammates, dorm mates, everyone just cheering them on. And we get to see all the countries that are represented at Fresno Pacific. Great, thank you. Uh, Humboldt State. I think ours is just the, the location of our institution. And like I said, during the presentation, we've got the ocean and the rivers and hiking. And we've got six different undammed rivers here locally. We've got in the winter time, you can go up. I said, there's no snow here on campus, but you could go up 12 miles and get to the snow. In the summertime, you can go 30 minutes in and go up the Klamath River, the Trinity River. So there's all kinds of opportunity for outdoor adventure here that students really take, take um, advantage of. While they Great, thank you. Uh, John Cabot. Yeah, um, what comes to mind for an event is uh, we have a gala that's available to the upperclassmen um, at the end of the year and we hold it at like this villa at the top of Rome and um, it's you dress up really fancy and you know I probably won't be able to get to do that for the rest of my life um, so having you know a nice gala at the top of Rome at some villa um, is pretty cool in my opinion. Sounds like it. You're making us all a little jealous, I think. St. Mary's. Um, if I had to choose just one, we have something, um, our main kind of uh, grassy area, we have our farewell barbecue um, at the end of move in, you're saying goodbye to your family, friends. And then um, four years later, when you graduate, we have something called plot parties. We're able to reserve like a I don't know how large the measurements are, but like a little area of grass and each student kind of will reserve an area of grass. So it's just like a big party on our graduation day. We're able to walk from one um, plot to the next and um, congratulate your fellow Gales. Great, right, thank you. Woodbury? I saw uh, someone in here today is interested in fashion design so i wanted to highlight one of our kind of big events is our annual fashion design show so our um we have a runway and it's held at a different location uh throughout los angeles every year and it's just a really really unique um, event and students you know obviously their fashion um their lines are highlighted they actually put on they produce they hire um, everyone for this fashion show. And it's kind of a really cool community event too. So we invite, you know, local communities and it's it's just like a big, uh, very exciting opportunity for, for our community. Thank you. Um, and we wanna thank again, all of our panelists for joining us. Again, it's hard to uh, give a taste in six minutes, but we do thank you for your presentations and hopefully all the attendees recognize that here are a bunch of people that they can reach out to if they have additional questions about these schools and want to connect to find out more about majors, et cetera. So all of our attendees, we do encourage you to reach out uh, to all these schools to obtain more information. Uh, but certainly we also want to thank uh, all of our attendees for joining us, taking some time to learn about these schools. Uh, we appreciate that and, and certainly hope uh, you learned a lot from this session. Uh, before we do close out this session, just a few quick housekeeping items. 
First is that when you close this window, you will receive a very quick four question, or four question survey that we ask you to take a minute complete. And again, about one week from today, a recording of this session will be available on that same registration website. Uh, but thank you again to everybody, uh, to all of our students. Good luck in the college search. Uh, have a great day. Uh, and to all of our students, I'll leave this window open for about a minute or two for you to go back in and copy any information you want from the chat box. So uh, we're all going to mute ourselves and sign off, but attendees, feel free to copy information from the chat. Have a great day.